I'm Jordan with Jordan Plays Blue, and this is my monthly roundup from February 2022. It's now March. I'll be honest, I recorded this a couple days ago, but my microphone died, and so I'm going to do this all over again. Uh, I didn't want to do it immediately when I found it out because I was in a grumpy mood. But I am not anymore, even though I was just on the whole, on hold with a bank um, for the last half hour, and that was in a grumpy mood. But now I get to talk about board games, so... I enjoy doing that, so let's just get right in it. I usually talk about a game I didn't like. I'm going to not do that this month. I just want to talk about games I really did like from February. The game I'm going to talk about first is probably my biggest surprise of these four games. I think I was expecting to like three of them. Uh, this one I was unsure about. It was a, a game that a buddy brought over. He got it as a gift, and... Um, it is kind of a more thematic kind of storytelling game, which is not usually the kind of games I'm attracted to. But this is Call to Adventure from Brotherwise Games. Uh, when they brought it over, I'll be honest, I was ex I was getting mixed up with Legacy of Dragonholt, which is literally just like reading books and going through a story together. Um, I thought that's what this one was, but this I, I don't think I knew anything about this game, frankly. And this is a card game and kind of dice rolling game, but instead of dice, it's these two-sided runes. So they're like D2s, I suppose. And um, you are going on these quests. So you're kind of a fantasy character going on these quests um, that are all laid out on the table. All the quests are going to have different symbols on them that match the t rune types. And in order to go on the symbol, you go on the mission, you have to match the symbols on your runes. So the runes that you've already, the cards that you've already collected, you roll those types of runes. Whew, whatever comes up, if they match the certain amount of values that you need to accomplish you complete the mission. You're just trying to go through, you score some points. You can roll these other runes that allow you to do things in a more kind of cunning or, I don't know if evil's the right word, kind of manner. And then you go down on this like uh, this uh, one track, or you could do things a bit more kind of chivalrous, I suppose, and you go higher on that track. That gives you some points at the end of the game too. But this, I mean, plays really quick. It's like a half hour to an hour kind of game. Pretty light, a lot of randomness with the dice rolling but tons of mitigation as well um the missions are cool the honestly the artwork is fantastic the whole production is really great i've i really enjoyed this one uh it was surprising to me and i'll be happy to play it again uh that is call to adventure <laughs> and another one i played with some friends um i bought this one for them for christmas uh, in a in true board gamer fashion, I sometimes will buy games for other people that I wanted to play myself. And so Trekking Through History is one of those that I was able to get uh, and give it to some friends of ours that like to play board games. Uh, one, my buddy, Garth, who might be watching this, uh, is a history teacher. So I thought a game about history could be fun. And this one is a card drafting game. You're car drafting cards from the table. And then you are taking those cards and putting them into a timeline in front of you. And as you're collecting those cards, they're also going to give you these little tokens. And you're putting those tokens out on your individual player board. And that's cool. Seen that kind of stuff before. But it also has this time track, similar to Patchwork, where whoever's last on the time track, is that's whose turn it is. So there's a lot of jockeying and a lot of kind of positioning yourself on that time track. And I think at the, the mix of those three mechanisms comes together super well. And I think it works uh, fantastically. This is definitely one of my favorites of last year. Uh, trekking through history, if you're into light kind of games, uh, this one's cool. Right, and another one, I picked, uh, I backed this Kickstarter a while back, and I've already talked about the other two games that came with it. This is from BoardGameTables.com, or now All Play. They always do like those three or four packs of games, and I... Oh, I have not been burned by one of them yet. Even like a game, I'm trying to think of the last couple sets that I've gotten. I've probably liked Factory Funner the least amount, but it wasn't even like I didn't like it. It's just that other people I played with didn't really jive with it. And so I ended up not keeping it because it was so crunchy and so thinky. It wasn't always fun for the other people, even though I kind of like that puzzlingness. So I moved on from that one, but pretty much everything else I've gotten from them recently has just been fire. I've really enjoyed this stuff. Uh, this was part of the pack with Nine Lives, which is a trick-taking game, which is excellent. And then Basket Boss, which is a surprise game for me because uh, I don't like basketball, but that auctioning is so cool. 
And this is Habitats. Habitats is a game from Corne von Morsel. This is an older German game that they're bringing back. And this one is the uh, precursor to a lot of the Uwe Rosenberg games like Nova Luna, uh, Sagani, Framework. I haven't played Framework. I played the other two. I really do enjoy Nova Luna. I think I have that somewhere. If it's not on the shelf, I don't know where it is. But Nova Luna, and um, I really do enjoy that one. And then um, Sagani, I didn't like as much. I thought uh, I didn't like being able to go into negative points. Um, but they were all inspired by Habitats. And Habitats is uh, a tile laying game with some drafting. So you're drafting these tiles off the table and then you're building your own kind of nature, safari, savanna preserve in front of you. And depending on the placement of the tiles, you will score uh, if they are surrounded by the right colors of other tiles. So say I got a turtle, the turtle requires three blues and two greens to be next to it and it wants to be next to grass and water, you know, turtle, turtley things. And so, you would then put a group of, hopefully, put a group of two blue tiles or three blue tiles and two grass tiles or whatever near that, and then you get to score it. And there's some other scoring uh, things to make it interesting, but I, I just think it comes together really smoothly. It's not too much going on. The whole package and the artwork is fantastic. So I, I really enjoy this one. My, uh, May really liked it. Um, everybody I've introduced it to has, has enjoyed it. So this is Habitats. I like this one. <laughs> And then the last one I'm going to talk about, this probably this is definitely the newest game on the list because it delivered like two weeks ago uh, from Kickstarter. I was able to try this at PAX a couple years ago, and um, I knew I wanted to back it since then because I thought it was really cool. And that is Rolling Heights from John D. Clare. Now, I, I do enjoy John D. Clare games. He uh, designed one of my favorite games, if not my favorite game of all time, Space Base. Um, and every game I've played of his, I think is is pretty solid. He did, uh, what did he? Do? I think he did Ecos First Continent. He did uh, Cubitos. Um, he did all of the the those card, the ones where he slide the cards into things like Custom Heroes and Mystic Veil and things like that. He, and uh, Ready Set Bet, which is also a cool game. So he's done a lot of really in a diverse kind of game. And so this is Rolling Heights is a tile laying game, which uh, Habitats also was a tile laying game. And you are buying these tiles, but the way that this is all, the engine like underneath the hood of this game is this rolling mechanic. Instead of rolling dice or, or even runes from Call to Adventure, you're rolling meeples. So you're gonna take these meeples, and of course they're just meeply shaped, and they're all different colors. And you roll them into this box, and depending on how they land, if they're standing up straight, you get two of something. If they're kind of doing a lean, lean, hanging, leaning jowler from past the pigs, you get one of something. And if they're on their backs, you don't get anything of something. But it also has that QB toes push your luck, where if you have, you know, if more than half of yours are laying down, you get to reroll for free. But if less than half of yours are laying down, you can push your luck, but you might bust and you, you lose some stuff. So it's got that underneath the hood. And once you roll those, then you get to take the resources of the matching colors or take these little bonus actions that maybe let you re-roll for free or turn things over, give you a point, things like that. And then you buy these tiles and then you put the tiles out onto the board and you're, put, you're using those resources in order to build little towers like a city on your uh, on those tiles. And it just works, it's just really cool. It is, I wouldn't say it's a light game. It's probably more medium weight and it also can take a little bit of time. Ton of setup, ton of tear down. But I really, I really do enjoy this one. I think, you know, I, I enjoy city building games and I'll, I'm a sucker for a good gimmick. And I think the Rolling Meeples works and I think it's fun and it's a cool kind of cool kind of thing. So Rolling Heights, I enjoy this one tremendously. I think that's a lot, I think that one's pretty cool. So there you have it. Those are four games I enjoyed from February, 2022. What did you guys play? I uh, hope it was good. What, uh, what were your favorites from, from last month? Um, what were your least favorites? I'll probably have some bad games I'll talk about next month because uh, I just played some. So there you go. All right, uh, make sure you follow me on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, like and subscribe over here too on, on the YouTubes. And uh, yeah. I'll still be in me next time, all right? I'm Jordan. Thanks. Mm -hmm.